Greetings. My name is Ibrahim Sumrain and I am a member of the Christian Arabic Church of Edmonton. Today, I am privileged to share with you my meditations on few verses. In particular, we go to Philippians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. I will be reading these verses later on, but let me introduce the, the concept to them. We as a humans experience constant pressure to adopt a strategy to live our lives. Either adopt a human system and yield to its demands and must learn how to obey its rules, whether they are political or social or economic, etc. on one hand, or as a Christian expected and invited to adopt and accept the divine demands and rules and live by them and accept the divine demands as the ultimate truth as they are clearly defined in the in the bible they may not be pleasing to the demands of the flesh but they remain to be the fact human rules are confusing and they can be erratic why? Because they are intended to support a group of people or a trend or a philosophy that could change or collapse any time. Following human rules and dictates will likely bring about temporary and biased rewards and expect the individual to belong and lose self as a proof of obedience and loyalty. However, God's rules are liberating and promise a life of righteousness, not only here on earth, but also towards the promised eternal glorified life. Obedience. Obedience to human rules require deception sometimes and smartness in order to survive the complex and confusing life. You may say something and mean something else just to either make a quick gain or avoid the human wrath. While obedience to the divine rules require a clean heart and honest intent to live by these rules, humans do not need to be smart and cunning to gain the approval of God. Rather, the grace that God gives changes the heart to believe and rejoice in what they believe. What humans need to obey the divine rules is to believe and via this faith guidance and direction become clear and comforting we call this transformation and it is possible only if the divine rules are adopted for today's sharing we will be meditating on philippians chapter 4 verses 8 and 9. let me read them for you finally brothers and sisters Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Paul is encouraging us here to go through this existential transformation to our thinking process. He is clearly saying that it is not going to be easy or even possible without the God of peace enabling us to obtain this transformation. Our behavior is nothing but a small part of our life. The major part is what we think about here. Throughout the day, our brain is grinding with what we want to do or say. Equally true is to say that what we do and say reveals a lot about our thoughts. Most of us spend lots of time influenced by neg negativism. And this often translates into actions that we tend to regret or may not be happy with. 
Unless we subordinate ourselves, our thoughts to Jesus Christ through learning biblical thinking in every aspect of life, we will fall under the burden of the desires of the flesh. Life under the burden of the desires of the flesh brings us pain and suffering here on earth and deprives us of the joy of the hope to come. Our actions and words begin in our thoughts here. Jesus said, what comes out of man, this defiles a man. Because from within, from the heart of men, evil thoughts, immorality, thefts, murders, fornications, acts of greed and evil, as well as deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, and even stupidity proceed. All these evil things come out from within the defile of man. This text is reported in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 7, verses 20 to 23. Because of the fact that I live in the flesh as a human, I am constantly experiencing an inner struggle in order to satisfy the desire of my body, be it physical or not. In order to grow in piety, I must win the battle over sin at the level of higher thoughts. Since our thoughts for the basis of our behavior, divinely inspired thoughts are very fundamental to the obedience that Paul encourages us to demonstrate as we live. Paul is telling us how to be perfect people in our relationship with God and with each other and within ourselves. Before we go further into details about those two verses, let me share with you what I and other theologians and readers and researchers found that Paul was not talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul does not teach about the power of positive thinking that the Christian world recently, in fact, more than recently, for a long time, has been penetrated by false teachings of positive thinking. Prominent preachers and teachers have been promoting that. Their teachings are not Christian in the orthodox manner. Through their influence, the idea, their ideas crept into the church that it is wrong to be negative or critical, one preacher was saying. Many Christians are now drawn to positive preaching and do not want to hear any preacher adhering to biblical truths. They want to feel good and they want to feel that they have the ability within themselves to make things better. What is the result? Loss of our ability to understand discernment. It's a heresy. One preacher is describing this to be heresy of positive thinking, which teaches that God will do what you confess or ask God in positive faith. This heresy attributes strength to faith itself and says that even if you are ill, you should not admit a negative confession by admitting that you are ill. Rather, claim faith to heal you by affirming, I am fine. Using positive mental attitude, that's the, what they preach. You are never supposed to think negative thoughts. You are supposed to use positive self-talk to have confidence in yourself and visualize yourself as healed, successful, wealthy, etc. in order to become a reality. All of these errors are based on the heresy of science of the mind that says your mind can create a reality. And through positive thinking positively, you can do anything to achieve any success that you want. These teachings appeal to the flesh, promote self, do not confront people with their need to be subject and subject their lives and be obedient to Christ. So, 
If Paul is not teaching that, what is he teaching in those verses? He's saying that the Christians through life, their life, should be focused on the great truths of scriptures being the only source of knowledge and being the only source of knowing what is true, what is honorable, what is right and pure and lovely and of good reputation. Let's get a bit more specific. Paul is talking about our need to think on whatever is true as opposed to things that are false and deceitful. True means the actuality of a thing. The true is that which corresponds to reality. God himself is the only final test for truth. He is unchanging. The moral standards revealed in his word, which stem from his holy nature, are also unchanging. Human truth is changing. It is relative. One preacher was saying, we are prone as humans, we are prone and vulnerable to these lies and deceptions of the world. The only way we can know the truth and walk in it is to seek the truth in God's word. What we hear or want to say and want to do must be evaluated through the word of God. We live in a day that is geared towards emotions and strongly influenced by philosophies like virtue of tolerance. In the Western world and what we label as democracies and so forth, Cultures assume that love means being tolerant and accepting of everyone and everything, even if God's word plainly declares it to be wrong. So if you go with the flow, you will be far from the absolute standard of moral truth, which is biblical and revealed in the world. We also must resist the pragmatism of our culture. Pragmatism here determines the truth by whatever works. So if something works and brings happiness, even if it is temporarily, or it accomplishes what you want it to accomplish, then it must be true. But God's word does, always, does not always line up with what works. Another preacher is saying, Christians believe that sin often brings pleasure for a reason. If it did not, we would not be so enticed by it. So the question is, that I always have to ask myself, is it biblical? I must test anything that comes to my mind. Thought, to be followed by act or deed, is to be examined via reading the word of God. Not because it is pragmatic. Paul is also encouraging us to think of whatever is honorable or noble. When something is noble, it inspires reference and awe. It is worthy of respect. And these should be characteristics of Christians and their faith. It is a character quality that we all should have. And that would enable us to lead a tranquil and quiet life in godliness and in dignity. And that means we take life seriously. I heard someone saying, don't be silly and goofy all the time, trying to justify that it is okay. We should not treat life as a perpetual joke. We live in a light of eternity, keeping in mind the uncertainties of this short life and the reality of eternal life. This doesn't mean that we are to be always pessimistic and or frowning that smile or a laugh or a joke is bad, but we have to be mindful to remain noble. Paul is asking us to think of on whatever is right as opposed to things that are wrong or not just. God himself is righteous. Therefore, we are to be righteous people, as John writes. 
John in first John, I should say, chapter three, verses seven and eight, he's saying, little children, let no one deceive you. The one who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. The one who practices sin is of the devil. To think about what is right means to think about the holy nature of God that is revealed in the person of Jesus Christ, and we are invited, encouraged, to model our behavior after Jesus. We are encouraged to think of whatever is pure, contrasted to things that are impure or dirty or unholy. That means moral purity. Keep our bodies, keep our thoughts undefiled. Stay clean, away from, her, from filth, from silly talk, from anything that is really not a Christian. In this case, you know with certainty that no immoral or impure person or a person of such a, a, a sin has inheritance in the kingdom of God. Paul is also asking us to think on whatever is lovely as opposed to what? Things that are not lovely or unlovely or ugly. What is pleasing and agreeable or attractive to the world may not be in uh, be at peace and in sync with the Bible. At times, we may find ourselves attracted to that which is evil. Now, Jesus Christ is inherently attractive and clean, and therefore we should think often of how our lovely Savior and that our attractiveness comes only from him. Paul is asking us to think on whatever is of good repute and can be admired rather than things that are dis, uh, disreputable or scandalous. We are invited to think of thoughts and deeds that are deserving of good reputation. We need to think about whatever is excellent in contrast to things that are inferior. We are encouraged to think about whatever is praiseworthy rather than things that are shameful or punishable. So my friends, what are we capable of doing on our own? Are we really capable of doing these things on our own and or in isolation from God? Let us keep seeking God and his grace, a grace that is always sufficient for us to alter our thinking. Unless we change the way we think, our deeds, our acts, our behavior will always be influenced by our thinking. So if our thinking is unholy, we will do unholy things. If our thinking is um, influenced by emotions like anger or resentment or hate or fear, our behavior will and, and speech will be influenced by these negative poisonous emotions. It is not out of despair that I go to God and say, help me. It is out of trust and confidence that God will enable me go through this transformation. So it is the alteration of my thinking that I am after and when the good Lord gives me this ability to change the way I think about things, I will end up behaving and acting in the right Christian way. God bless you all and keep you. We are going through extraordinary times, difficult times at all levels, political, social, psychological, economic, World peace is fragile to say the least. You may have a neighbor who probably is not making your life easy and you wonder what to do. Whatever the issue is, 
Anytime you examine yourself, examine myself, anytime I have a thought of retaliation, hatred, deceit, lying, etc., before I allow behavior to follow, I will kneel before the cross and say, Lord, I am unable to do it on my own. I want you to give me, create in me a clean heart, O God, as David, the psalmist wrote. I want to handle life the way that you are happy with. Give me the strength with confidence and always trust that the Lord is always there for us. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.